this week we're going to be looking at Children of the Lamp. It's a children's book of the magical children sort, but with enough of a different idea that it seems interesting. I, I'll take a look at it, I'll see you on the other side, and we'll discuss things that it inspires. Teenage discovering that they're descended from genies, Jim, um, and I would probably rank the story as it exists in this book at a solid 8.8 .8 out of a 9.5. So I recommend having a look and uh, reading it up if you want to. I don't think I'm going to have anything really spoilerific after this, but uh, if you're worried about it, read it first. Come back and watch this later. Um, I'm going to go into things that uh, it inspired in my mind, um, starting with the idea of jinns living normal lives and not knowing that they're jinn. I kind of like the idea that somebody can discover that they're this mythical race of beings that, if you look at the history, supposedly live alongside us and are in a lot of ways equal to our own state of being where they can be good or evil they have free will they can make the choice of where they want to go with their life but there's also an aspect of the mythology that suggests that they're different enough that things that are things they enjoy would be things we would find disturbing or uncomfortable. Some of the myths talk about how they would eat things we would consider garbage or unhealthy. Um, so some of those kinds of things where somebody discovers that the things they always thought they liked and other people thought they were weird for are hints that they're not exactly human, but it doesn't make them weird alien creatures, it's just a different kind of type of being that's lived alongside us all this time and nobody really knew about it, nobody told them about it. There's the idea that good luck can be given or um, passed on or in my mind this kind of inspires the idea of kind of luck good or bad, being sort of like a cold or a disease you can pass on to other people. And you might have somebody who's a carrier or willfully infects other people this way. And I can see a story coming from that idea where, where the force of luck is unknown to humanity, actually an infectious agent that's passed by people who may or may not know they have it and uh, there might be some malicious intent by some to spread bad luck and 
uh, some benevolent intent by some to spread good luck. Um, the granting of wishes seems a bit over magical in this story, and I would like to see it done a bit more mundane in the idea of maybe done through like knowledge or connections or um, skill. Um, I think something along the lines of, you know, if you look at the story of like Rumpelstiltskin where he he knows the secret of turning spinning straw into gold, um, it's still kind of magical in that sense, but if you had it more along the lines of knowing how to turn a simple ore into rubies, um, doing something alchemical like that, I like the idea of that being the way, like a, a, a genie or a fae creature, leprechauns, whatever you want to use for that role, would grant wishes so that they would just um, do these things in a way that is achievable by a human, but their knowledge, connections, and understanding of the world is just that much deeper that they can do it and we can't. Um, a, a little less of the poof, it happened, would be kind of a, an interesting way to do a series of books or a, a, a series of stories. Um, the idea of there being other tribes or lone jinn out there that are not affiliated with a tribe. Um, in this case, it makes me think of like a samurai being committed to their, their lord, but there were things like ronin who were masterless and didn't really affiliate necessarily with a given uh, lord, but still were, you know, quality, they were distinct from necessarily ninja or thing like that. So doing something equivalent for the, the jinn would be nice. I think the uh, restriction to the, the, the tribes was a little too tight and made it seem too narrow and bounded. Maybe they're not the sole distributors of luck. I think I would like to see other things in the world that might be mysterious and have a role in luck and happenstance in the world. I can imagine considering some of the story that the lepre leprechauns might take, take exception to the idea that the djinn think they're the only ones in the world. Um, and I think there's some implications for the world being a little more richly fantasy imbued than just adding one race that has magical powers and then pretending nothing else exists. I think that was kind of crippling for me in this one. Um, and the, the last thing on my list of things here is my favorite part of this is the whole idea of having the bottles being essentially like a little fortress of solitude that one could pack in your luggage and take with you. Um, and the part that's really fun for me about that was, depending on how one enters it, it not only affects the inside being bigger than the outside, which is taken for granted, but, you know, taking into account time and space being intermeshed, depending on how one enters it, um, time moves differently for people inside of it, and it puts me in mind of um, stories like Rip Van Winkle, where spending time in the land of the fairies, time passes differently, but it's never really suggested that it's solely, it moves slower there, because it can move faster or slower, and I like the idea that this bottle, this little fortress of solitude that you can carry with you wherever you go, this little tiny mobile home, that you can hide away in a little area and go inside, and uh, inside of it, time could pass fast or slow, however you want to do it. You can pass centuries or 
You know, you can spend weeks inside a bottle and be only outside of the real world for a minute or two. Like, oh, hey, I need to study for this test. I'll go study for a week and come back out in a minute or two and uh, go do the test with a week's worth of studying. Or something to that effect. I think uh, doing the reverse where you could hide from the complications of a war that your family is trapped in and you come out a hundred years later and the, the after effects of the war are gone but the world is so different. I mean there's potential for stories in those but I think the idea is just awesome. Now, I've got the next two books in this series and I'll probably take a look at those later. If anybody's interested I might do them for the uh, channel here but uh, I may just do them for my own enjoyment later on, but uh, if you haven't read it, take a look, see what you think, but uh, hopefully we got some ideas here that are good writing prompts or inspiration for you, or maybe paintings if you want to look for uh, uh, visual art from it. And uh, I'll see you next week, we'll be looking at Simone with Al Pacino. Uh, see you then.